Welcome back to Wade Acres. Today we're going to get the cold frame started. So it is the beginning of March. We're just starting to get some nice sunny days as you can tell. But it's still pretty cold out and we're going down to 16 degrees tonight. So I can't really be planting outside unless I plant inside my cold frame. That's why I built this last year so I could get a jump start on the season. It's still cold enough to where if I sowed seeds outside they would freeze and die. But the cold frame should keep the frost off of them and keep enough warmth in there while the sun's hitting it to actually have them grow nicely. I'm going to be selecting certain plants to put in the cold frame and that'll help with the overall success. So first thing I need to do is clean it out from any of the old plants that are in there and the weeds that have grown and get a new layer of compost in there for the seeds to be sown in. Here is my cold frame. You can see I even built the pond around it so I didn't have to move the cold frame. Built it right into the flower bank here. And if we open this up, we can see Still have some carrots in there, a couple weeds growing. Those pots in the corner are actually hyacinth bulbs and I believe iris, Dutch iris bulbs. And they already flowered inside the cold frame earlier. I have some carrots in the back there that are still growing. They're probably fine to eat, but I bet they have horrible flavor. They've been growing since last spring. My six inch soil thermometer has it at 44 degrees. So uh, there's definitely some seeds that will be starting, will be able to germinate in 40 to 50 degree soil. So that is what we'll be picking. We gotta get some of the tags out of here. Anything else, we got a tiny little bucket. It's nice. And a tiny little wheelbarrow in here. And some more tags. I don't think this thing works anymore. Change the batteries in it. But yeah, I need to get this cleaned out and then get a nice fresh layer of soil in here for us to plant in. This will go to the compost and here is the compost getting pretty full this time of year it's not breaking down as fast but I just keep layering my compost I have uh, some browns and some greens some kitchen scraps so mainly I just leave this thing go it is about four by four feet in size so it should hold some heat in the center but I just keep layering it and then every spring I'll come in here and rotate it to the next bin I have here and uh, that's all it gets. So I'll pull out whatever good compost is down at the bottom and then I'll just rotate it and keep filling it up for the next year. That one had a lot of the baby chick bedding as well. Pop, what are you doing? Come on. Stuck on the wrong side of the fence. Come on, puppy. Daffodils are coming up. Look at all them. I think I have some leftover mushroom compost from last year. Just enough to cover this cold frame. So I'm going to go up and get that. What are you looking at? There's something in there. What are you looking at? Oh puppy. Gonna come in the shed and get the wheelbarrow for the compost, so might as well check in on the chickies. Hey Eggers. How you doing? You're all caged up, huh? Looks like you're all doing good. Nice and spread out. 
warming up from the lamp. Got them all pinned off. They can't get out, hopefully. They got water and they got feed, so they're good. Yep, they're good puppies. You don't have to worry about them. Okay, so the noise under this blue tarp. This is mushroom compost that was bought last year. Oh yeah, looks like we'll have plenty to top coat the cold, cold frame with. Right pup? compost is all smoothed out even I got all the big chunks busted up and I think we're looking pretty good we're ready to sow some seeds what a beautiful day it is outside look at that gorgeous sky out there. nice but with Sun comes shadows so you get my shadow this is how I'm starting it out. I'm going to put the shorter varieties in the front because obviously you see I have a sloped lid here. So I put the gourmet lettuce in the front. Following that will be the cherry bell radish. The flavor king bunching onion will be across the back row right there. And then in groups in the back, I'll have the Swiss chard. Rat oh. The lid just fell. Hit me in the head. Yeah. Okay, put that back up there. I think it broke when it hit me in the head there. Dang, I'm gonna have to fix that. We got the kale there and the spinach in the corner. So we're just gonna fill this whole thing up. I'm probably gonna leave another row so next week I can sow the radishes again because you definitely wanna keep su su succession sowing your radishes and your bunching onions because you're going to come out here and harvest those and you're going to harvest the roots and all they'll be done the lettuce i'll be able to sow in a dense row and then just clip off the new growth or the old growth and the new growth will keep coming so i'll be able to cut and come again harvest the lettuce swiss chard kale and the spinach but i'll be succession sowing the bunching onions and the radish so this compost has been outside so it's already moist but how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to pat down an area just lightly pat down an area that's going to make it nice and smooth all the way across the bed because I'm going to plant rows and then I'll take my finger here and just draw a line in the smooth area making a little trench only about a quarter inch deep half inch at most if I catch a clump make a little trench like that you can see that and then I'm going to take my package of seeds open it up and we're going to take the packet and just sprinkle some seeds out as we go down the line helps to keep your hand moving that way if something's falling out it's always it's not making a pile 
Go ahead and tap it across. You want to sew them probably about every inch or half inch, but I'm going to pretty much multi sew mine. You can see how dense they are. I'm going to do it like that because you can harvest some of the smaller ones and then let the rest of them grow. So that's kind of the method I'm going to be using. So we're just going to lightly backfill, cover the seeds. Make sure they're all nice and covered and making contact with the soil. And then go ahead and pat them all down again. Make sure they're covered. And radishes are some of the easiest seeds you can start. So go ahead and get them started. Get them started early. And you'll have food quicker than any anything else will give you. You can see the birds are already working on their nests in the red maple. And I did just see a couple of birds come out of that house right there. So they should be doing some planning. Trying to figure out where they're going to be putting some houses. And I definitely have some options up there for them. And I can't wait to see some birds move into my gourds again this year. The onions are easy because they're bunching onions. So we're definitely going to have to sow more than one in a... What is it? A little bug. I'm going to give that bug to my chicks. See if they like it. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to make a little divot here with my finger, about half inch I would say deep. And I'm going to make a few of them here, just uh, kind of diagonal from each other, a couple inches apart. And uh, I'll make six, seven, eight little divots there. And I'm going to sow eight to ten seeds per hole there. And that'll give me some bunching onions, they'll grow up together, and we can harvest them all in one bunch. Okay, let me back those onions as well. And I left room to succession sow another batch of these in about a week. I have a rainbow swiss chard from MI Gardener. I'm going to sow the same way. Pat down the soil because it's real fluffy since I just put it in here. Make a small hole with my finger about a half inch deep. And then I'm going to put three of these seeds in here. These might be cluster seeds which means they would have more than one plant per seed but just like a beet would. Then uh, pack it down like that. I have a Swiss chard marker there from last year. A, I had Swiss chard in here last year, so that's why I had the same marker. I reused that, and then I marked the kale and the spinach as well. And then I was like, I don't really need to mark the onions, radish, and lettuce because I know what they look like, and I'm not going to get confused. But there, the chard is done, and I'm going to plant the kale and the spinach the exact same way. Okay, and the only one that's actually different is going to be the lettuce. Lettuce has very small seeds, if I can try and show you in there. They are small seeds. So you don't want to cover them much, or at all. So I'll try and show you. I'm going to sprinkle them in here. I'm going to sprinkle them really tight together. Sorry, I was watching myself sprinkle and not watching like where the camera was. But I did two kind of tight rows right there. And then what I'm going to do is cover it with some wiggle worm castings your castings because it is a very fine type of uh, medium and I can just cover them very lightly with this instead of putting big heavy clumps of anything else on top of it. You can use some dry peat moss or 
really anything dry is going to be a lot easier to spread thinly on top of the seeds but I'm going to use this because I have it available and it's going to work out just fine so I'm going to do a thin layer to cover up those seeds because they don't have a lot of energy to actually plug through I'll just sprinkle some of the extra around they don't have a lot of energy to push up through the soil being a small seed so you don't want to put something real heavy on top of them that they have to try and lift up to get their first true leaves out i'm going to do that same method over here and i already did pat down the soil so that there's no big deep crevices Okay, that was the rest of the pack, so I only got one row on this side, two on this side, but no big deal. I'm going to take my wiggle worm castings and just sprinkle it right over top of those seeds. Cascade the rest of the castings. Can't hurt the rest, can't hurt the soil here. Going to now pick up all my packaging right before the final step. The final step is to water. Now this cap I have to spray just a little bit of misting on, a little sprinkle cap, doesn't quite fit this Aquafina bottle, but I'm just going to go through and lightly spritz everywhere I have seeds. Don't want to saturate them because the compost is already wet so don't get them too wet but just get a nice first initial soaking onto these seeds it's going to be nice to see the first seeds of the year coming up I already actually have some of the seeds coming up that we started in the last video. My brassicas, my broccoli and pak choy are actually already coming up. If you're wondering what that is in the corner, that is an onion that started sprouting in my storage. So I decided to bring it out here and put it in the ground to see if it would uh, drop some seeds for me. So that is what that is doing, just uh, kind of an experiment. See what happens all right we're gonna get these onions wet we're good to go that is the cold frame started and i do have to fix the lid because it did break but i'll do that off camera don't worry about it hump up what are you doing buddy just sniffing all right here is this cold frame beginning of march just just sewn and nothing growing yet, so definitely subscribe down below. Hit that like button before you leave. You can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching.